So these are the awesome ornaments we're going to be making tonight and they're made with Dollar Tree brushes. And I wanted to, once again, create things that you could create, make easily and expensively around the house. Um, and so I thought, well, paying a dollar for an ornament would be wonderful. So what we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna come in and sand the handle because the handle actually has a shellac on it, even though it looks like it's bare wood. So what you're going to need is sandpaper, a sanding disc, an emery board, something where you can just sand it and take the coat of shellac off. Now I've already done that. And so the next step is going to be, you're gonna come in and seal it. So I wanted to also give you a variety of options because what's important to me right now is that you're all able to use uh, products that you have in your home. So if you have some Mod Podge, that's what I'm gonna to use to seal it. If you have any form of multi-purpose sealer, you can also use that to seal it. And I'm gonna put my mouse out of the way now that I know that I'm on and you can all see me. So I just, I'm going to take a brush and you can use an older brush. And I'm gonna just, and seal. I work very quickly and I'm just putting a nice smooth and even coverage down. It's transparent, so you can't see it. And why am I doing this even though I've sanded? Well, I don't know because I'm assuming these are all made over in China and I have no idea what kind of shellac they put on it. And chances are it's a um, oil-based product. So by sanding it and then coming over and put sealer or putting the Mod Podge on it. And this is just matte Mod Podge. And I got this at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Um, so, like I said, I want to keep all your costs down. So while that's drying, what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our next step. And that would be to cut the um, hairs. Now, if you want to leave it just square like that, you can. But what I did is when I came in and I cut the hairs, I did this very slowly. And I will tell you, I'm not going to do it now because the brush hairs go flying everywhere. And so what you want to do is you want to put this over a container. I put it actually down deep into my garbage can and then I cut the hairs and I cut the hairs very slowly and I just tried to round them off and had them come to a V like this. So once your hairs are cut, what you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to use some type of fabric. Now you could also sand the metal and seal that and just base coat over that if you don't want to go through the expense of having the fabric. I like the fabric um, because that way it hides this little um, two inch and whatever the millimeter is thing is right where the face is going to go. This is duck cloth, I believe. I don't know, I'm not much of a sewer. Um, but I asked the people at um, Hobby Lobby what the best fabric would be um, that would be close to canvas. And it's duck cloth. So what we're going to do is simply come in. Now, you can use linen, you can use any kind of heavy fabric. So I also got some Aileen's glue from Dollar Tree. And again, it was only a dollar. I used my coupon for my duck cloth at Hobby Lobby. And so I think that was only $1.54 a quarter yard because that's the minimum you can get. So what you want to do is make sure that this bottom part is all the way down past the um, metal. I don't care if the metal's showing up there. And then we're gonna just wrap it around and allow it to um, adhere and then we'll set that aside and let it dry. And while I'm showing you all these 
um, steps individually. I can say if you want to mass produce these and make them um, for gifts, you can easily do that. I would suggest though that if you're going to be all the cutting, if you're going to be doing this with children, all the cutting should probably be done by an adult. I'm going to put Flesh Tone by Delta Ceramco out. And again, when I put out the instructions, I really wanted you to use whatever colors you have. So, you know, this is a fleshy color. If you want to make it, if you want to use peach, you could use a light peach. You could add a little bit of blue or gray into it to tone it a little bit. Um, you can adjust whatever colors you have, but this is what the color of his face is going to be. And this is Delta Ceram Coat's flesh tone. So what I do is I come in and you're gonna have, you're gonna see that because this is a, like a canvas fabric, but it has not been treated like canvas, you're gonna have to really push the paint into the material. So just use a lot of pressure and make sure you have a nice, even coverage. And I'm only gonna do the front the back we're gonna um, put, make gray. Now our next step, you can use Delta Ceram Coat Rain Gray, you could use Hippo Gray. I did not call for any kind of gray because I figured I can show you how to mix gray. Again, trying to save you money. So what I'm going to do is put out the Delta Ceram Coat White. I really like this white because it's got a nice coverage to it. It's nice and opaque. Some um, whites are very transparent. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of black next to it. Remember, a little bit of black goes a long way. I've got a big puddle of white, a little bit of black, and we're gonna just make it gray. You know, will it be the same each time? Well, you know, it really doesn't make a difference, but if you were to measure it, you could say, well, I've got about a quarter size um, puddle of white with about a pea size um, puddle of um, black. And so I've got this color right here, which is a nice medium gray. So now this is still wet. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just go in and I'm gonna put my paper towel down underneath here and we're actually gonna paint the brush hairs. And I got some fabric stuck in mine, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is just push very hard and we're gonna cover both the front and the back. So you can see how hard I'm pushing. Turn it and paint the sides also. Whenever I'm base coating, I use um, a lesser quality brush because as I'm pushing this, I am pushing my paint up into the ferrule. And so I don't want to use expensive brushes for this. Make sure you let us know if you have any questions. You can type them in. And also let us know where you're from. We'd love to hear where everybody's joining us from. I know last week we had someone from Hawaii and our last lesson, we had someone from Hawaii and we had also someone as far away as um, Alaska, which I thought that was neat. And we have a lot and an also an awesome lady from Columbia joined us. So now once that's done, I can, you know, if you want to smooth it out, make sure the bristles are all nice and smooth, you can. 
I kind of like it rough like that. Whatever you want to do is fine, but you can just smooth it out with a little bit lighter touch like that. Then I'm gonna go into the top and I'm going to just use a little curvy stroke, like three little curvy strokes. You know, and if, if you're concerned that they may, may not be just like mine, that's okay. But just keep them right on the edge, just three little curvy strokes on both sides. Then we're also going to come in and we're going to make one big curvy stroke over here and one big curvy, curvy stroke over here. So if you noticed in the instructions, there was no line drawing, no pattern. I know that you are all gonna be able to handle this without a pattern. Then we bring it across and we paint the back side. And again, it really, you have to really push on this fabric. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna put that one to the side. And by the magic of everything, I have one right here. Now this does not have the hair in, so I'm gonna um, really quickly put that in. What I can do first is I can dry brush the cheeks on and show you how those go on. And so what I'm going to do is I've got this puddle of flesh tone and I'm gonna put, I've got my opaque red here. It will be approximately 50-50. Um, and we're gonna make a really cheery, fleshy, color and this is going to be for the nose and for the cheeks. So it kind of looks a little bit pinky there. Now the noses that I'm using, I have two different type of noses. And one is this ball knob and the other ones are mushroom, mushroom caps I believe or mushroom knobs, mushroom knobs, oops. One is a little bit flatter than the other one. And then this is a full round. And let me show you what they look like when they're done. So this is the flat mushroom knob right here. And this is the big ball nips. So you can choose which ones you want. Now one to let you know that these are available at your craft stores, but these, along with many of the embellishments I've used, are all available from Bear With Us. And we would really like for you to support our decorative painting suppliers. And that's what this month is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, base coat my nose really quick. And if you see how I put it on the end of one of my brushes, and it's very important that it's not a full round ball, that part of it's gotta be here. And all I'm going to do is very quickly base coat this. And then because I've got it on the end of my brush, I can set it off to, side, to the side. If you don't have a lot of brushes um, and you don't really have one that's narrow enough, you could use like a, a bamboo skewer, skewer that you have in, in your kitchen to put the um, nose on. Again, whatever you have around the house um, is going to turn into tools for us. Okay, well, I got a little bit of red there, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna cover that with gray in a second, but I wanna show you how to dry brush this in and how to get this in. Now, last, my last one where we did the, um, Halloween little um, candy corn things. I showed you how to dry brush with a big brush. Well, this brush would be way too big. And so I wanna use a smaller one. 
And I'm going to show you how to use an alternative method too, because you may not have a variety of dry brushing brushes. Dollar Tree does carry these. Um, they carry um, a variety of them, but every Dollar Tree is different. So as you can see, what I did is I'm spending a lot of time taking the paint on my brush. I loaded it really well. And now we're gonna come over and we're gonna just make some circles. Everyone knows how to make a circle. And see now that's so nice and light. I wanna show you the difference. If I don't take the paint on, you can see that this is gray back here, but look how heavy and how bright that is. That's not what you want. You really wanna take the time so you have a nice light circle. You use a nice light pressure. You can always add more if you need to. So this one, I wanted to show you. Now, another way that you can do it is you can use a Q-tip. So I'm going into the paint and I'm going to remove a lot of the paint on the Q-tip. Will this be as easy as a uh, stenciling brush? No but it will still work. So see, I'm using ever so light of a touch. And just like that, we have some rosy cheeks using a Q-tip. Isn't that fun? Now, in a lot of the, um, in all of the ornaments, I have four different color handles. I really want you to choose what handles you're gonna be using. On this one, it was the smaller one. I'm using the metallic, um, and this is taupe, uh, but it's more like, I would say it's a champagne color and I think it's just so pretty. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my dry brush, um, excuse me, I'm gonna use my base coating brush. I rinse it out really quick. I'm gonna put my paper towel on there. And what's important again, when you're base coating is you load a lot of paint into your brush, but you really push it into the brush and you don't wanna have a lot of globs on it. So then as I come over here, because this is a natural color, that natural color is going to glow through. And I only put one coat of this on the champagne color um, gnome. Because it's a metallic paint, it tends to dry faster than regular acrylic paints. So don't keep going over and over it. It's gonna be a little bit slick because you do have the Mod Podge on there and that's okay. Now, if you wanted to have um, like, I love silver in my house and gold, you could use silver and gold along with the champagne color. And what I normally do is I let one side dry and then I turn it over and then do the other side. Okay, so our next step, um, once that's base coated, we've got the face in. It's not really looking much like a Santa yet, is it? Let's zoom in just a little bit more for you. I have my identic pen. We used this in our last lesson. And in our last lesson, we, um, we definitely um, used it a lot and we used both ends. And I'm gonna use both ends again. I'll start out, well, that's a little bit wet. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom. I want to just make a little U shape or a big U shape underneath here. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to just stroke and stroking this onto the brush. I can also come in and stroke it on. Now this paint's not dry, so you need to make sure your paint is completely dry. So we're gonna give that time to um, dry. While it's drying, 
I'm going to take one of, well, that's the big one. I'm going to take and put the nose on, and I'm going to show you how I ended up doing the eyes. All of the faces are done the same. So I put the nose on. I'm not going to glue it on at first because I still need to work on the rest of it. So what I'll do is right above, let me get my other identical pen. Right above the nose, I'm going to just put two dots. And after I put the two dots, I'm going to just draw two lines. And they're coming to both sides of the nose. So you can see how that's evenly spaced. Then I'll take my nose off. And I'm coming in and just making a U shape. Now I can see that um, I have a question is what did I cut the hairs with? I just use scissors. No special tools, whatever scissors you have in the house, it helps to have nice sharp scissors. But when you're cutting the scissors, it really, I mean, when you're cutting the beard, it really helps to go nice and slow. Um, Cause just like if you're cutting your own hair, if you get a little bit too crazy, um, chances are you're gonna cut way too much. So you go to just take it a little bit at a time. So now my paint was a little bit wet. So I wanna show you that this is what it's going to look like when um, it's nicely filled in and we've got nice rosy cheeks on it. So the next step is to put out some white. Now we're going to make some strokes of white on here. You can use whatever brush you have. If you don't have a round brush, you can use a smaller flat brush and just use a chisel pool. Um, and I'll explain the difference between them. Let me get my round brush. I am gonna thin the paint a little bit just so that it moves because this Delta Ceram Coat White is nice and thick and it gives you good coverage. So what I've got my round brush in my hand. And what I can do is just come in and add a few strokes. And I'll do the same coming down here. Go off to the side. The brightest part of the beard is down at the bottom. Now, for those of you who don't have a round brush, I'm gonna show you how to use a flat brush. And a flat brush is simply one that has uh, a rectangle edge to it. So this is my flat brush. What I'll do is just, instead of having it like this, I'm turning it on its side and I'm going to just pull like this. What's important is all those lines that we have made with the addictant pin, we're going to allow those to show through. So don't do too much white. Now, if you prefer a gray beard, then come in with a, a lighter gray instead of white. I just like these two tones together. And you can pull some on the sides. You can, um, you know, it, depending on where you're going to hang these, you can go along the back. I don't have any of the lines pulled yet, but if you're going to hang them on a tree, you might see both sides of the ornament. I like the idea of using these on a wreath or hanging them from garland. You can hang them from your windows. Um, there's just so many fun things you can do with these. I 
And I'm not gonna touch anything here because we're gonna have the hat band. If anything, if um, I need to, I'll just come in with the identipen and add some texture back there. Okay, so while I have my white out, um, I can use either a stylus. Now for those of you who don't know what a stylus is, this is a stylus and I'm gonna show you a few other things that we do with it in a bit. But we're gonna go in and we're going to use full strength paint and we're gonna just put some glints on the eye. And now he can see. You can also use the stylus and just pull it and give a little highlight to the cheeks. Once that's done, what we'll do is we'll take our glue and glue the nose into place. I like to make sure that I put a lot of glue up into the, um, I think these are doll heads, but um, bear with us, they call them um, ball knobs. So I put it into that hole and then I come in and just center it and make sure that it's centered right with the eyes. And he's already looking somewhat gnomey. Now on this particular brush, I had a two part base coat to the handle. First I came in and I put turquoise on it, um, but I wanted to have it have a little bit of shimmer. So I decided to come in and put a second coat over it with ice blue. And that's what I'm going to show you. And it's going to alter the color just a little bit. And again, metallic colors tend to be a little bit more transparent. And so this will just glow through. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I have a nice clean brush. And I'm gonna just go over this and it's gonna make it like a little bit frosty, but that turquoise is gonna glow through. And I also, I lay my hand back so I don't make a lot of brush strokes. That's key when you're base coating. If you can lay your hand back as far as it goes, you're gonna have less black brush strokes showing and you should be able to do this in one application. If not, you can always add a second one. But I just love the combination of these two colors together. So let me turn it over. You can see how shimmery it is. So now that's how dull it was. It was, a, even though that's a beautiful color, I just love the shimmer that, that the metallic brings to it, especially on a Christmas tree or a wreath or wherever we're gonna be putting this. Okay, let's set this to the side and let this dry. And we're going to talk about our red, our white handled um, gnome. And um, I basically put polka dots on it, but I wanted to show you a few alternative things too. So to make the, to make the um, polka dots, I put out some red. It's the opaque red. I love this color because it is truly opaque. For those of you who have been painting a while, you know how hard it is to base coat with reds. Well, opaque red is a wonderful color in the fact that it um, will cover right away and you'll see that. So what I'm gonna do is I can either just put the dots down like this, but I reload every time. If you want bigger dots, you can use a bigger brush or you can swirl your brush around If you don't have a variety of brushes, you can look for anything that's got a round handle in your house. 
and you can use that to do this. Less is more. You don't want to um, put too many dots on. And so you can see how quickly this goes. Now, I can't flip this over because the dots need to dry, but let me show you on this plain one. Um, let's say you wanted to go in and just make some swirls and they make identic pens and red and green. So you could make some swirls with red and green or just red. So you could just go in and make some swirls. You can get creative. So basically this is just a number six that's continuing on. And that's really fun too. It's fun to create patterns with different things. Now on this one, I did use a stylus and I'm gonna zoom in so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm not too worried about that extra piece of fabric right there because it will be covered by the hat band. Um, we have a variety of size um, balls on the end of these styluses. I'm gonna use the Dreamweaver um, small, but this is one I believe I got this from Dollar Tree. And so the stylus was only a dollar. And every time I'm gonna put out some fresh white some Delta ceramic cut white. And I'm going to show you how to make some snowflakes using dots. So essentially, wherever you put your um, first dot down is going to be your biggest, your biggest dot. And I'm using the fatter end with this, but then what I'll do is I'll just come off and go one, two, three. I'll put my stylus back down and go one, two, three. And the reason I'm coming into the middle each time is so that the biggest part of my paint will be right in the middle there. So you can see how the size of the dots diminish Now I'm gonna go into my smaller end and I'll do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And just like that, we have a snowflake. When it dries, what I did is I put rhinestone right in the center of it. And then I repeated these going throughout now, if you, if you wanted to make variety, what you could do is come in and just put a dot over here and one over here and then one here. And then maybe you could have a snowflake over here and it could go off to the side. So my center is right there. So again, you can make whatever patterns you want. I'm going into my small one now. I also used white on the champagne or the taupe color metallic. And with that, I use toothpicks. And so what I did is I made these star shape um, flakes that's on there. So what I did is come in and I set my toothpick down and then I just pulled off, off of it. I set it down and pull. And it's gonna give us more of a star type shape. Now you could also use a stylus with this too, but I like the 
point of the toothpick. And it's really easy to use a toothpick because it's um, very firm. What's important is as you're putting these on is that you try to scatter them in a pattern where they're evenly spaced and try to wrap them around the side like that one's going off on the side a little bit and then you can continue them around no one's going to see these super up close it's just going to create a pattern now if you um wanted to, instead of white, you could bring in your black marker and do the same thing. And that might be a little bit easier on the back side. You can see this is dirty, so there's no paint on there at all, but I'll show you. And hopefully my identi pen will work because I get paint in it before. No, it's not wanting to work, but anyway, there it goes. Okay, so you could come in with black too. You could use the red or green to create these patterns. But what's really important is when you're done with these star shapes that you come in and you put the rhinestones in it because the rhinestones just make them so pretty. And then that's gonna sparkle on your Christmas tree or whatever you put these on. He's so cute, he says hello. On the red one, I use some very interesting tools. And um, basically the way I did this is I cut this. And hang on, I need to get my scissors. So this is duct tape, um, or it's for drywall tape. It's drywall tape is what it is. And you can get this at Home Depot. And again, it might be something your hubbies have in the house, but it's easily available and very inexpensive. So what I did is I used it as a stencil and I cut some small patches. And it has a sticky side to it. That's what I love about it. So then I came in with black. And I'm gonna use my little dry brushing brush again, or my little stencil brush. Oh, no, I'm not because it's in the water. And one of the worst things you can do is have a wet brush. So I'm going to use my Q-tip. Because of your Q-tip, you can load with paint and then remove the paint just very much like you can a stencil brush. And I'm going to just pounce it up and down. And I want this to look like patches. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. A, a small stencil brush would work easier. But I wanted to show you that if you don't have a stencil brush, you can still do this and use your, your tape. Then I'm going to pull it up. And then I'm going to just use my my identi pen and we're going to just make little stitch marks. And we can put a little Square going around it. And there we have a little patch. And obviously I did that to all three spots. I will get him so you can see. This is how I did this one. I wanted to talk a little bit about all the trim that I had on all of these because 
I did end up going to um, Ho Hobby Lobby and getting most of the, the items. I want to say right away, this is an ostrich feather boa and this is a fleece type fur. And I have a little dog in my house and he really liked this a lot. So I had to go and buy another one. So if you have a little cat or if you have a little dog, make sure you hide these from them because otherwise they're gonna want to play with them and, and uh, have a lot of fun with them. And, uh, and the same thing with this fur too. But you can get whatever you want. And that's why I got a variety of things. So this, and you can see that those are really shedding a lot. This is like a really fuzzy fleece. And the way I put it on the white one, so I put my glue down and then I folded it on both sides. So there was some thickness to it. And you wanna scrunch it up a little bit and then fold it over. So it kind of curves around and see how that looks like a hat now. It looks like a hat band as opposed to if you were to just make it super flat and bring it around. I mean, that still looks fine, but I like when it's scrunched a little bit and then you pull it down just a little bit and it gives it a little bit more variety to the shape. It curves it around and try to hide his eyes just a little bit because with gnomes, you don't want to see their eyes a lot. I have to have eyes with my gnomes. I, I just, I have this thing about things without eyes. So that is how I did the white one. Now, the fabric that I got with the um, Buffalo Chicks, and I will tell you that this fur fleece, the lady at Hobby Lobby said that if you run, if you dampen it and run it through your dryer, it will not shed. And I didn't take the time to do that. And look at the mess I'm having. So make sure you take the time to um, run this through your dryer with a, um, after you put some hot water on it and it should not shed like this. But anyway, what this is, um, it's a little bit stretchy. And so I don't know what kind of material this is, um, but there's a little bit of thickness to it. And I like that. And it reminded me of flannel. So I put that on the same way and I scrunched it up. This one I made a little bit wider. And then I scrunched it up so that it had this kind of look to it. I thought that made, it gave it a lot more interest. And then as far as the embellishments, if you go on to bear with us, they have all kinds of wood embellishments. They have little birds, they have metal snowflakes, they have all kinds of things. Um, this embellishment I use, I used on my blue one. And so, or excuse me, on my turquoise one. And so what I did is all I did was paint it and then I came over it with the um, metallic, just like I did. And then I put a little rhinestone in it once the fur was on there. Uh, and I just thought that added a lot to it. And let's say you wanted to add just a lot more sparkle to your, um, to your handles. Well, you could add some, this one has some white and blue snowflakes. These I got at um, Hobby Lobby and I thought those would be really pretty with this too. Anything that sparkles and these were on sale so they cost me a dollar. Um, I love these snowflakes. These could go on any of them. And um, I like that they're all sparkly too. I also got this greenery. And I, you know, this is all I got at Hobby Lobby. If you don't have a Hobby Lobby by you, you can check out Joanne's Fabrics. They all have these areas where they have little um, embellishments. But I must say that these were all in the paper crafting area with the exception of these. These were in by the Christmas stuff. But what I did at the end to um, make everything all shiny is I use the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. 
And let's see, can you see the sparkles in the beard? I just love that. So what I did is I went over, before I put the headbands on, I went over the whole thing on all of them and I added all the sparkles. So you can see the sparkles that we have on this one. And what I like about using the Mod Podge or any type of varnish that had glitter varnish is when you put it on, it's not gonna get all over everything. Um, when you use regular glitter, uh, the last Halloween pro project I did, that glitter got everywhere and I'm still finding glitter everywhere. But this is very much contained and it just adds that nice little sparkle. I'll show you my fourth one. So you can see I, I sparkled them all. This one, I just add some rhinestones and a little bit of greenery. So be creative. Use the colors you love. Use the colors that you decorate in your house. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you'll subscribe and please click on the bell so that you'll be reminded every time I post a video. And until next time, may painting always bring you joy.